All right. Um, the attendance assignment right now. Give me a second. Okay. All right, make sure to do the attendance. I put that in the chat. Is my mic working? Um, all right. Yeah, it's working. All right, all right, good to know, yeah. Um, yes, we'll wait for other people to start coming in, you know. So yeah, just make sure to do the attendance. Yeah, I think we can wait uh, just a few more minutes for people to start coming in. sure to do the attendance. I'll post the link again if you need it. So now I think uh, now I think it's pretty reasonable to start. All right, so um, let's make new no not new Python three. My bad. Let's make a new folder for let's just call this meeting ten. Yeah, we're at 10 meetings already. So, yeah, let's get into matplotlib then. So, um, yeah, this lesson is the start of a new unit, I guess you could call it, where we're gonna be covering matplotlib, which is a Python library a lot like the other ones we've learned about and with our with the other Python libraries we learned about we have learned how to organize and analyze large amounts of data 
right? Using matplotlib, we can visualize this data in a more or less simple and efficient manner. So um, first we have to go over how to install matplotlib. So uh, just look up cmd or command prompt. I mean, this is the e easiest way to do it. So um, just type in pip install matplotlib. As you can see, I already have it installed, but if you don't have it installed, you should probably do that. So now that we have that installed, uh, we can import it to our file. Uh, so import, oh, this is a bit different than normal. So usually you just do import matplotlib as something, that's it. But you need to do import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Oops, as plt. There we go. And we also have to do something else. We have to do this matplotlib inline. So what this does is, if you're using Jupyter Notebooks, you don't need to do this for any other type of notebooks, but if you're using Jupyter Notebooks, you can use this command to see the plots in the notebook. As, and, don't, and you don't have to put plt.show to see your plots every time. But, uh, yeah, but if you do, if you're not using do Jupyter Notebook, just do plt.show at the end and you can see the plot. But first we gotta make a plot, so let's start with that. Um, well, actually, before that, we do need to import uh, NumPy, so to have something to put inside such plots. So now let's make two NumPy arrays. Let's np.lin space. So in case you've forgotten, uh, lin space, it's just evenly spaced values within a certain interval. So this is 0 to 5, and it's 11 values. So print, actually no, you don't need to do that with your notebook. So here you go. 11 values from 0 to 5 that are evenly spaced. And y is equal to x squared. So every value in the array is now squared. There we go. So let's go over a simple plotting command, a simple matplotlib command. So it's just plt, which is what we abbreviated the matplotlib.pyplot as, plt.plot, and just input x and y. Oh, there we go. So yeah, there you have it. Um, that's, that's a very simple plot right here. So. We have our x on the bottom and our y on the top, and this is the line between them. So this is a yeah, this is a pretty easy plot. Uh, just a reminder that if you're not using Jupyter Notebook, you can do plt.show to actually display the plot. No, it's this way. So, yep. So yeah. Um. So while we have uh, created this plot, it doesn't have much detail to it. So we can make it easier to understand and easier to read to other people um, and to ourselves for ourselves as well by adding labels to the x and y axes. So we can put plt dot oh, whoops plt dot x label and. Um, we could just put this as uh, x. I know, a very creative name. Plt dot y label, and we could just put this as x squared. That's how we're gonna write squared. And we can do plt dot title as well. So we can call this comparison between x and x. Oh, yes, we do need to plot this again. So while this may seem tedious, we'll go into the how to use objects with matplotlib, but this is just the basics. So yeah, here we go. 
Um, we now have this same graph, but now we have Y label, an X label, and a title for everything. So there's that. So um, you've seen how kind of tricky it all is. You need to, uh, like if I, if I had this line right here, I need to put it all in one block for it to show up on the plot. So I need to put this line plt.plot x and y. So that's just tedious, you know? Um, so let's bring in some concepts you probably learned in your programming classes about object-oriented programming in general. So um, we can create an instance of the figure class uh, from the uh, that we got from importing the matplotlib library. So f we is equal to plt dot figure. Yes. So here we go. That's our figure. So uh, instead of having to put these all in one cell, everything we add to f, we can always print f. It's it's kind of. I think we already covered objects before, so I don't really need to explain it too much. But yeah, this is basically we're creating, we're instantiating an object of the class figure that's found in matplotlib.pyplot, or that we abbreviated as plt. Uh, plt, sorry. <clears throat> so, first thing we need to do is add an axis. Or axis to the figure. So we can see, say, f.add, we press tab, there it is, add axes. And it's not tab, sorry, it's double tab. And um, we do have to give it a parameter here. So this is an array. And here. So you may be wondering what we just did there. And okay, a dot plot x y. Hmm. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, you may be wondering uh, what this little array here represents that we input it into this function. So, this array, as you can see, has four values. These uh, the first two values represent where this uh, plot is placed on the, you know, where it's placed in this area. So it, it's, it's going to be a bit easier to understand and, you know, explain when I show you an example of how to use these to your advantage. Uh, but anyways, and these are the height and the width of the plot. So as you can see, if I make this 0.5, for example, then um, that's wait oh no 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 I need to sorry I need to refine these yeah there we go yeah so um, if I make that 0 0.5 for example it just it's half the size half the width here if I make that 0 0.5 over here then it's half the height. So uh, all you need to know is that these values range from zero to one. So probably, I think this will give you an error. Oh no, it just makes a larger plot. Yeah, you probably won't need to go uh, use values outside of the range of zero to one. So yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, all right. So we can also we can also do what we did over here. So we can say a dot we we can do a dot set x label. Notice how the methods you need to use here are a little bit different from here, but they have the same uh, same outcome in the end. So we can say this is x on the bottom a dot set y label 
we could say this is x squared on the y-axis and a dot set oh, oops a dot set title and then we could say what did we say before yeah I'm too lazy for this let's just copy and paste it down down here all right so there we did that um, and now if we print out F there we go and you don't need to have it all in one code block and if I call F again then it still shows it yeah so this is probably why uh, using the figures object is much more useful than just calling plt.plot and uh, only calling the plt uh, functions that are with a plt. Okay, so um, you can add multiple axes. So uh, we can have multiple graphs, like I showed a bit before on accident, but let's go over an example of that. So uh, let's make let's make a new plt dot figure though. Just start from scratch. All right, so a one is equal to f dot add axes. Yes, so f dot add axes zero zero one one. All right, so. This is pretty self-explanatory, you know. We just uh, okay, yeah. Oh no, no, no. Let me change these numbers up. So, yeah, this is pretty self-explanatory. We just added the axes with these two being the position on the board or the canvas or whatever you want to call it, and these two being the height and the width of the um of the plot. So. A2 is the second axis we're going to add, or axis we're going to add, but this one's going to be a little bit different. So we're going to do 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and we're going to make this a bit smaller. So we're going to say 0 0.5, 0 0.5, or no, maybe that's a bit too big. So 0 0.3, 0 0.3. So now we can do a1 dot plot x y so the plot we've been reusing countless times until now and and we'll do let's switch it up a bit we're doing we're going to do y x for this one so now if we print f now would you look at that so now using the location and the size options for these axes we've been able to put with uh, simply we've been able to put another a plot in within a plot so um, this probably isn't too well placed I think I can change that a bit so I can make it a little higher so let's say 0.8 that's way too high oh okay yeah I need to start uh, I need to run, uh, start running it from here again because, uh, as you can see, it adds it to the existing figure we already had, instead of just making a new figure. So yeah, uh, that maybe that was too high. So let's do 0.5. See what happens. Yeah, this is better. It's easier to read. But yeah, that's um, that's about how you do it there. Yeah. Um, so you can add more than one axis. So you can do A3 if you want to be really crazy about how many axes you have on your graph. Actually, wait, let's space this a bit. Ooh, six, okay. No, 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 sorry. Uh, let's see if this is better. Yeah, this is more in the corner a bit. So we could say uh, uh, F dot add axes add axes um, now let's see we can do 0 
six. So that's going to be around here or somewhere around there. Um, zero point one. That's going to be the height. So we don't want that to be too high. Okay. Um, and then we can do zero point two, zero point two. There we go. So now we have. Oh, whoops! I forgot to add a plot to axis axis three or axis three. There we go. So a three dot plot. Let's see. X Y. Or you know what? X X. Let's do x x cubed. Why not? So that's f. Yeah. There you go. That's x. That's y. And that's x versus x cubed. So that's x versus x squared. X squared versus x. And x versus x cubed. So yeah. Now there's that. All right. So the final basic uh, matplotlib method we're going to be learning about is just saving a figure. So uh, it's pretty simple actually, it's just save fig. Um, let's call it weirdplot.png. Now that we've done that, boom. Whoops. All right, yeah, but there we go. That's our PNG image. Or if we view the image, there we go. That's that, that's better. So yeah. Um, now we've just saved our image, and um, if you press Shift Tab, you can see which uh, which arguments the function can take or the method can take. So. Yeah, there's there's a lot of arguments you can do. Um, you can do the DPI of the uh, image, which is the pixel density, if I remember correctly. There's a lot of things you can do with the image, but for our purposes, it's just easy to do safe fig, put it as a PNG, and that's it. You know, you don't really need to go any more in depth than that. Um, yeah, so. Now, let's go into the legends, uh, adding legends to our plots. So, um, let's just create a simple plot again. So, f I'm just keep reusing this f variable for some reason. It's just right next to my finger, my index finger, so it's easy to type out. But anyway, uh, there we go, plt.figure, so f, f doesn't have any any uh, axes associated to it, so let's fix that. A is equal to f dot add add axes, and then we already have x. Let's do x squared. We already have y, but I'm, this is gonna look better like this. Um, so we can create a label for each of the lines by adding a new parameter when we're adding an axis. So we can call this label is equal to x squared. Pretty self-explanatory. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Yes, I am looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, I was typing out the wrong part of the thing. Yeah, so uh, forget what I said. This is just gonna be the array portion of that. Uh, so yeah, we define that. Now, when we're plotting it, now we can do what I was just talking about. So we can do a x x squared. Then we can label this specific plot. Uh, we can call it x squared. Now this isn't going to be the only one we're going to do. So we can do x x cubed. Label is equal to x. Oops, x cubed. A dot plot x x to the fourth yeah it's just to the fourth okay label is equal to x to the fourth and keep in mind that um, 
X is just a NumPy array, but there's various types of arrays you can implement. You can implement a specific column from a data frame in to Matplotlib, which we will be covering in the more advanced section of this le these lessons, which we'll be doing, I think, next week because it's getting pretty close to time. I mean, not too close, but y you know what I mean. So yeah, um, now we have our graph F. There we go. Pretty, pretty nice graph. Pretty looks pretty good. Um, yeah, and then a dot legend. Yep, and that's all you need to do. There we go. Beautiful. Now um, you can choose which location you want to put the legend. So. I can say a dot legend uh, put it where um, low so that's the name of the value in the parameter so which one is it okay so if you look here um, no, no, no that's not what I want to look at uh, kind of hard to find wait there we go okay um, Parameters, there we go. Labels, list of SCR, other parameters. Look, okay. So this loc is just a variable that you can put strings such as upper right, uh, upper left, lower right, lower left, and place the legend at those corresponding places. And you could just put numbers in there as well. So these are the location codes. For that so we can go over that a little bit so we can say a legend at loc one so that's going to be over here and as you can see it's kind of in a bad spot over there so because it's blocking our view of the data points and data line so we can do loc two yeah so that's our um Want it position so, but there. Oops, whoops. So you really don't have to go into these because uh, this because of this. Um, loc is equal to zero. So when you set the loc uh, loc parameter to zero, which is uh, the default value, of course. Um, well, I mean the default value that the of the method. Um, so what this does is that matplotlib, uh, for the lack of better term, matplotlib finds the best spot to put this legend, so it's not blocking any of the data points. Or even if it is, it's blocking them to the. It's doing its best to block the least data. So, uh, yeah, this is most useful. You're probably never going to not have to use this. Yeah, the, it's just really useful. So, yeah, uh, I just wanted to go into that a little bit. Uh, now we can go into how to customize stuff. So, um, right now you can see there's various different colors here, and while they're nice, you, they they aren't that nice. So let, let's uh, let's let's see what we can do. So let's make a new naturally. Let's make a new uh, figure. With F, so a dot add. No, no, sorry. A is equal to F dot add axes, and then you can add a certain axes like. Uh, yeah, this part doesn't really matter in this case. It's just the default. Um. So yeah. Now let's go into something more interesting. So let's do a dot plot, and then we already have our x variable defined. Let's just do something really simple: x plus one. Um, and then we have another parameter called color. So we can set this color to blue. So now, if we print that, it's blue. Um. Okay, so you don't need to just uh, input the string. You can also input the 
RGB hex code. So uh wait. Yeah, so let's say you wanted to do something like this color. Probably like okay. So we can do x plus two to just differentiate it. And then we can say color is equal to whoops, not that. It's equal to and then it's magenta. The exact color we're looking for over here. So yeah. Um now we can also change the line width and the transparency of the line. So let's say we wanted to do, ooh, okay, RGB. All right, let me think of, let me see some good ones. There we go, this is what I'm looking for. So let's say we wanted a type of light blue. Okay, so a dot plot x x plus one oh x plus three sorry and then we could do color is equal to this and alpha which uh signifies the transparency if you've worked with photoshop you probably know this already so we just gave a number between zero and one if i remember correctly so i could just say 0 0.5 and line width which is pretty self-explanatory. I'll just give this line width of three. We're gonna have a thick uh, line. There we go. Oops. Uh, did I do something wrong here? Invalid RGB A argument. Oh, whoops. Is it still invalid? Uh. How is that? Oh wait, has this still not? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me uh, run these all again. There we go. Now, yeah. So you can't really tell the transparency from here, but say, say I remove this and then the default was one. It's gonna look a lot brighter. So yeah, it, it, you probably won't need to use it but like with most things we're covering oh whoops 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 let's do this yeah see there we go looks a little, a little bit brighter so there we go um yeah now um there is even more customization to be done which is surprising but when you've got a lot of lines what are you gonna do so a dot plot X plus four this time. And then let's choose a nice dark red. Let's bring it a little bit over here. There we go. That should work this time. And we can, so we have two variables we're gonna be talking about. Or two parameters, sorry. So one of them is line style or ls or actually first we're going to be talking about just ls so ls is the style of the line it's pretty self-explanatory but let's say i just put the equal sign over here i can't put the equal sign can i okay yeah here it says the supported values yeah so yeah whoops that's my bad um so let's put these lines here and I press okay whoops my bad um there we go now now that we've did, done that um, we have dashed lines for our graph okay uh, let's look into let's try another example of that so x plus 5 Color is equal to, once again, I'm going to waste a little time finding a nice color. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is nice. This looks nice. All right. Um, and then we can do this line style, where 
for example, we can go with this. And now it's dotted line style. Uh, and I was talking about markers, so let's see what that is. So a dot plot x x plus six color. Zero eight okay okay zero zero eighty seven ff uh, wait the stream is something's wrong with this stream oh, okay never mind it's fine all right um yes so this is Rahi's favorite color and okay we already talked about ls so let's just do something simple uh yeah let's just do what we did the last time. And now we can do markers. So what a marker is, is actually, wait, no, I have insert. Okay, there we go. Marker is equal to, oh, so now as you can see, these are, hey, that's really close to my favorite color as well, as well. nice. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as you can see, these are the various markers that are here. So the O is a type of marker. Ooh, I have to remember. So I think, which one else, which one is another marker? It's, is this a marker? Oh, no, 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 I need to do, there we go. Yeah, stars can be markers as well. Yeah, all of this, it's, yeah, the amount of customization you can do with matplotlib is amazing. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of stuff you can do. And uh, yeah, you, you have to look at the matplotlib documentation to see all the ways you can, all the various ways you can customize the, the, the lines. But these are, more or less the basic ones you can I think you can add color like different colors to the markers and I don't know you can add patterns and stuff if I remember correctly but all of that's in the documentation because that's a lot to cover and you won't be using 90% of it this is probably the most you're gonna be using and uh, let's just do a yellow so let's just go over everything we've covered in this customization section with one thing. So um, let's change the line width for this one. Okay, line width is equal to five. And then LS is equal to, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, alpha is equal to one. That's the default value, but you know, it's it's good to include it, just to review. And uh, ls is equal to this marker is equal to. Let's do stars. And this is oh that that looks a bit strange, but yeah, <laughs> there's so there's that as well. And. I think um, we've gone over most of the basic plotting today. So let's just go over what we learned to do today um, before we go. So first, um, we of course installed matplotlib with the pip install matplotlib command through cmd. So yeah, then we imported it, learned how to create, well, learned how to plot things in matplotlib, learned how to label plots, learned how to label titles, and now we created a figure object here, and um, we learned how to add axes to such figure objects. Yeah, uh, we learned how to do multiple figures within one uh, axis multiple plots within one axis I think or no it's no multiple axes within one figure 
there we go. <laughs> so there was that. We learned how to save, which is just save fig. Um, we learned how to do the legends here. And finally, we learned about the various forms of customization, like color customization, line width, line style, marker, transparency, uh, etc. etc. You know, um, so yeah, um, if you guys don't have any more questions, that's pretty much all we're going to cover today concerning basic numpy uh, not basic numpy sorry basic matplotlib plotting commands um, next class or next lesson not class because this is a club after all uh, next lesson we're going to be talking about uh, multiplots and subplots so we already started working with multiplots uh, here a little sorry not here there we go here but subplots goes a little more in depth in that regard so yeah um thanks for coming to this meeting uh i guess we'll see you guys next week uh, have a great weekend